What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Samatech once again, and today I have some more leaked benchmarks, this time for the new i5 8600K from Intel, so stick around. In case you've been living under a rock, the 8600K is the new i5 from Intel. It's going to be based on the Coffee Lake series, and it's still on a 14 nanometer manufacturing process. The big news about this is that we are getting an upgrade in core count from four cores to six cores on the i5 series. This also is not including any hyper threading, so it is six true cores. The base clock is going to be 3.5 gigahertz with an all core boost clock of 4.2 gigahertz and a single core boost clock of 4.4 gigahertz. With all of those stats aside, there were two leaks. There was a leak for a Fire Strike Ultra test and then a Geek Boink. Blah, 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 blah. Geek, geek Boink. <laughs> and then a Geekbench 3 benchmark. So what I did is I went out and found the stock performance of the 7700K, the 7600K, and AMD's new Ryzen 1600X, and then put that all into some charts for you guys to take a look at, which we'll throw up now. Starting things off, let's go ahead and take a look at the Fire Strike physics test where the 1600X actually smashes pretty much everything else on the board. However, the 8600K does fall right in line between the 7600K and the 7700K with a score of 13,715. The notable thing here is that that is a big jump over the 7600K's 8723, so I'm pretty impressed with that. So you'll also notice that this isn't perfect scaling, that we did get a little bit more performance out of the 8600K on a core by core basis, and if we take a look at the Geekbench single core clocks, we do see the 8600K wiping the board with every other processor that we took a look at with a score of 4113. This is definitely pretty impressive, meaning that we do have an actual IPC improvement over the previous generation Intel chips, which is what we do want to see, not just more cores. Of course, the 1600X does have that pretty poor performance in the single core of 3734, but things change once you throw it into the Geekbench multi-threaded test, where the 1600X comes out with the win quite a bit with 22,000. It does scale quite well. Coming in second, surprisingly, is the 8600K, which actually beat out the i7 from the previous generation, the 7700K. This does appear to mean that not only do we have a better single-threaded performance on the 8600K, but it also does appear to be scaling a little bit better than the previous generation as well. Now, of course, this doesn't really tell the whole story. We do want to know more about these chips in relation to gaming. And since we did get a Fire Strike Ultra test done, I did take a look and I went ahead and took a look at the tests since the, I guess about July 27th was the oldest benchmark that I took a look at because I know that the AMD chips have been improving their gaming performance. And surprisingly enough, at least in a benchmark, which is a kind of close ecosystem there we saw that in fire strike ultra all of these chips are within 10.7 and 10.85 frames per second on their combined FPS score what this means is that there's not a huge amount and within margin of error of actually gaming performance provided that the developers are optimizing it as well as the benchmarks have been optimized and fire strike ultra is one of the older ones so it's been optimized quite well for as far as like core counts etc so that is something to keep in mind i can't wait till we can get our hands on one of these chips so that we can actually test them in some real world gaming benchmarks let me know what games you guys are interested in playing and maybe later in the future we can take a look at those games in some benchmarks don't forget to leave a like and comment what your thoughts are and as always i will see you next tuesday